Alright, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. The, ben the benefits of bottle conditioning a hazy. <laughs> oh, hey there, gang. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And because of that, we decided that in this morning we'll all drink some beer. It's actually a pretty cloudy morning, pretty dreary morning, um, which is perfect for a nice, bright, hazy beer because I forgot to drink my orange juice. That's right. Ah! So, the topic of today's video is going to be kind of my new favorite way to drink a hazy if you have the, have the means to do it, and that's uh, a bottle conditioning. I think with bottle conditioning you get a nice creamy, foamy head to it. Uh, it also helps preserve the, uh, the hazy beers because they are so susceptible to oxidation. Uh, actually, bottle conditioning will make sure that you scrub out all the oxygen and make a more shelf-stable beer. Yep, yeast are really good at doing that kind of thing. Um, also, it's going to uh, help that beer um, essentially turn it over because on a hazy, as, as long as you're pitching a really good healthy yeast pitch, you should be putting that beer in a bottle within about a week. Yeah. Um, which is, is that, is that what we did here? This is about yeah. a week, yeah. Yeah, about a week, yeah. And then about, it's been conditioning for about another five days and then it's got one overnight in the fridge. That's it, a good sound. And it's got carby carbs. Carby carbs. Are be, I actually stored this upside down because I wasn't confident this is going to be a uh, a uh, perfectly sealed bottle. So I stored it upside down. What that does is makes it so that if anything leaks out, what's leaking out is going to be uh, liquid instead of the gas. That way all the gas gets trapped in the bottom of it and it actually carbonates a little bit faster. But because that might be a little bit of yeast glomming on the top here. Nice! Oh yeah. Yum. <laughs> yeast in the on the top. This is going to be like extra, extra hazy. <laughs> uh, I actually, I'm going to get a little bit of a pre-pour glass and then we'll pour into these guys. <laughs> So by the way, while Peter's doing that, um, something that I think we've mentioned in some other videos, uh, hazy IPAs are not actually hazy because of the yeast. They are hazy because of other proteins, other hop oils that are binding to those proteins staying in suspension. So uh, never, never for have that uh, misconception of a hazy beer is because you have yeast floating around. Mm. This isn't uh, this isn't the Mac and Jack style of. Uh... <laughs> Of no, beer school no, here. No flip kegs here. Yeah. Actually, that's not looking too bad. There's a, there's the chunk. Oh yeah, get those chunkies. Oh, it's a beautiful color. Beautiful color. Bottle conditioning beer. Uh, do we have a side by side to compare with this? Uh, we have a we have a keg conditioned beer. Keg conditioned beer. Of the same of the same beer made with a different yeast though. Oh. Okay. But we're saving because we're gonna do an actual side by side with that on a different video though because we're gonna do we use juice in this one which is a really phenomenal hazy IPA strain. We use the actual Conan strain in the other one. We're gonna compare the two, just to go yeast battle, basically. Nice. Yeah, I got some great pics of that. It was really interesting to see the two different fermentations on those. I'm gonna go get the recipe for it so we can help break that down as well. Boom. Yeah. See that, folks? You see how pale that is? I don't know if you can see it in the lighting right now, but this is a, this is a ridiculously light-colored beer. Yeah. So the hops was exactly what I thought it was. It's Columbus and Equinot. Yeah, and it was okay. just standard pale malt. Um, it was a standard pale too, all right. Yeah, but then the only interesting thing is the. Uh, uh, flaked part of this recipe is about 40%. So you've got 40% uh, so between, big. yeah, between yeah. flaked oats and flaked wheat. Yep. So uh, and I believe we also did uh, made sure we aggressively stirred this mash, make sure we got all the enzymes acting as much as they can, which also helps uh, break out some proteins from the mash too. Yeah. Throwing rice hulls on your hazies, it's gonna it's gonna save your bed. So on this uh, beer, the the slight kind of guava and tropical notes of the equinox come out, but I really like the balance of using Columbus because now it's on. The, the more classic pungent side, but with all the juicy creaminess that you get off of a proper hazy. Yeah, so let's talk about, oh, I, I, I turned that off. Now it's quiet. What were we talking about? Yeah, I actually really liked using that Columbus because it has a nice kind of classic style pungence that you get off of it, uh, which I think gives a little bit more assertion to an overall really smooth and really fruity, uh, kind of soft, creamy style of beer. Awesome, well, let's, uh, let's see, see what that did then. It's really cold. Um, we had it in our walk-in, which is like 34 degrees, so. Because of our awesome DIY walk-in glycolness that we posted a video of. Bing! Oh, I get like uh, like melon and pineapple too. Like you get the classic guava, but then melon yeah. and pineapple come out. A lot of that is from the yeast, not just the hops themselves, but there's some, some great aromas. Um, which is another benefit of bottle conditioning. You can actually develop some new aromas in the during the bottle conditioning process. Uh, that kind of that you're not going to get if you are taking it off the yeast. Yeah, if you take so. it off the yeast, you just get that sharp, bright, tinny, um, tinny brightness. Um, whereas bottle conditioning, you kind of it really helps to round out that flavors. I like it a lot for multi-style beers. Yeah, um, it works really well for this too. 
You know, you're you're picking out the hops, but I'm I'm gonna go on a different tangent here, and uh, I'm gonna say there's something to do with the mouthfeel of this beer that is different than pretty much every hazy that I've had to date. Yeah. And this thing is straight up chewy. Yeah. Like it is it is ridiculous for being this color. Oh yeah. It's chewy. It's it, I like to call it almost creamy, like a mocha froth or something like that. Like yeah. That, that nice. And it's got a little bit of that Columbus bite um, right in the mid palate, but then it instantly fades. Oh yeah. Which is really that's that's that's, that's yeah exactly that's something that I really really like. Um, yeah, got nice soft aromatics, really really soft finish on it. Um, that could also be due in part actually from the bottle conditioning as well. Yeah. I know other beers that I've bottle conditioned tend to have um, a somewhat softer finish on them. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't know the science behind that. I'm sure there's something I should have looked up before this. To take this one step further, I really do think the hazy is a perfect cask style. I can even see yeah. a hazy being like on a nitro blend, but I think true cask hazy would be just delicious. So is it, is it time to start up a cask program is what you're saying? I think we need to. <laughs> With all the extra time and space and money we have. You know, <laughs> hey, if, if anybody wants to send us a, a cast, feel free to do that. Yeah. Pinners, ideally. They're little five-gallon ones, but anyway. So that's it for Yum Num Num, I'm guessing. I don't know. Yum Num Nums. Do you have anything else to add? Um, we're getting drunk at 8 a.m.? Yeah, we got a half gallon to go. <laughs> so that's that's to wrap it all up. Basically, a fun new style, a way to do a hazy IPA. I know a lot of you like just throwing things in kegs, uh, but you do get a whole new experience just going into uh, bottle conditioning. If you want to try this method, uh, if you have an extra growler with a proper poly seal cap, uh, uh, per I just use carb drops. That's all I did, and so you can keg off most years and then just uh, do a couple growlers to kind of side by side the difference. But that's it. We're gonna go turn this phone off real quick and yeah, dang phones, and then we'll. <laughs> Check it, comment below if you do this and what it tastes like. Boom, you can also do it in a keg. Should we do a video? Let, let, me, let us know if you want to do a video. I had a cask in a keg. David He-Man. Damn it, He-Man. Sorry, you're going to voicemail. <laughs> yeah, video about us turning a corny keg into a cask, because that'd be fun. Comment below if you want to see it. Viva la beer! Viva la beer! Like, subscribe, love your dog. Tickle us.